literally, when we first started in on the program, took off of land, take off of water, take off of snow. So that's what makes it a tri-figure. It was also supposed to sit in the garage, and the wings did fold, and the tail did fold, and the idea was that it could fit into your two-car garage like that. Also, it was a small airplane, and this is an artist's sketch of the airplane sitting next to a Cessna 150 or 152, and that you get an idea of comparative size of the two airplanes. The next slide shows the airplane actually, the actual airplane sitting next to a Cessna 152 in our little uh, uh, area that we had next to building us, next to building five, where we actually ran ran the engines and uh, uh, before taking them out to our flight test area. So that there's the actual airplane alongside a Cessna 152. Here the airplane is out at Oakville. Uh, this is a, a, an abandoned airport out in the, in the El Centro area, which was our test facility. We actually put up a small canvas hangar that housed the airplane, and, uh, and also so we could work on it because, you know, the whole field in the summertime is pretty warm, uh, and uh, it was a hot day. This is an airplane that we rented from Gibbs Flying Service to fly some of the fellows back and forth and some of the equipment back and forth between Montgomery Field and Oakville. And you'll, in a short time, you'll be seeing a videotape of these two airplanes taking off in a racehorse start uh, off the runway. Uh, we were looking at the acceleration of the two different airplanes. Here's uh, uh, probably one of the first taxi tests. And John uh, Westerman was the only one that ever flew this airplane or ever taxied it. I think that's right out there. Walt Mooney taxi. Walt taxied it at about five miles. Yeah, Walt taxi it, but John actually did the high speed taxis and the lift offs and so on. I want to, uh, you know, it does have this Delta wing, and I want to mention that uh, I happen to know Chuck Yeager pretty well about this point in time. It would be, uh, at that time, by this time, he was a colonel, I think, Colonel Yeager. And, uh, and I worked with him on the XF 92, which was the Delta wing. So we invited Yeager down here for one day, and he talked to Don, uh, patted him on the back, and says, don't worry, Don, I'm going to fly. Uh, well, I guess about as high as we went, maybe 6,000 feet, that was as high as we went, I believe, and, uh, and the countryside in the Oakville area. See, there's a few shots in the air. That's the Oakville runway down below. Another shot in the air. As far as we know, we do not have any movies of the airplane at altitude like this. We do have uh, movies which you'll see of the airplane uh, making runway flights uh, and, and in the air, but, but at these higher altitudes, we do not have pictures uh, of, of the airplane. There it's coming in for landing. Uh, this picture shows uh, the airplane without the stators behind the propeller. We did have, uh, this, on the first flight, we flew the airplane without stators, and on the second flight, we flew the airplane with stators. And we'll show you a picture of those stators here in a minute. But there was a considerable amount of difference in the rate of climb between the two different flights. Uh, maybe somewhere 400, 500 feet a minute rate of climb at sea level without the stators, but maybe 12, 13, almost double 12, 1,300 feet a minute rate of climb with the stators, which makes a lot of difference. We had a 4,000 RPM, we had a flight moving engine in the airplane and, uh, uh, and turning at 4,000 RPM. We had a special, uh, two special engines that were the cams were reworked by low flight moving so we could run them at 4,000 RPM because that was the optimum 